Hi, I'm Rick, and today we're going to set up the RTAC for remote engineering access to connected IEDs, and we're going to use legacy commands to do that. And what I want to do, each relay is considered an access point. Every port that you configure on the RTAC is considered an access point. So what I need is a remote access point configured so that I can, from a remote location, connect to the RTAC and then give a port command and tunnel to a port. So to do that, I'm going to click on Other from the Insert ribbon, click on Access Point, and I can rename it if I want, and I can select what type of access point it is. Today's video, we're going to do Ethernet incoming listens for connections. So we're going to connect to the RTAC via Ethernet. Make a secure connection using SSH, which I've got here, and the local port number you can change, but I'm going to leave it at 1024. So now we need to connect that remote point to these uh, relays. To do that, we use the access point router. Again, from the insert uh, ribbon, connect on access point router. You can change the name if you wish, and so I'm going to call it engineering access. The, the source point is the point that we're connecting to to get to the relays, and that's the one that I just put in there. It's called other access point. Then you can see all of the relays are listed below, and you notice there's an AP and a TAP. So the AP means that when you connect to that relay, you've taken co total control over that port, and that's called direct access. The TAP is regular uh, transparent connection, and that allows the relay to be pulled by the RTAC, still deliver information from the RTAC to the RTAC, and also allow you to do engineering access. You can do meter command or change settings. So I'm going to select all of those for all of my three relays, and I'm going to enable legacy commands for this particular video. Click on insert, and it'll create these access point routers. So what we want to do for each one of these, for this particular video, there's several different ways you can do this. We want to change the source authentication to true in each one of these access point routers. The reason we're going to do that is to demonstrate that when you connect to the RTAC, it's going to ask you to log in. So we're demonstrating source authentication. So some user who accidentally gets to the RTAC or nefariously gets to the RTAC can't access the release without logging into the proper credentials. So we've got that all done. I'm going to save it. So we just load that in the RTAC and then what I can do remotely is connect the RTAC using that same port number 1024 that we have configured in the access point and then I can enter the port command to get to the different ports. What you want to do is go to the engineering access access point router that we just created and go to the POU pin settings. The POU pin settings are the program settings that kind of tell the, the program how to work. And so each one of these access points has a different command to get to the different ports. So for example, if I go to the first access point router, then the POR1 command will get to the first port. The POR1 space D command, as shown here, goes to the first port in a direct transparent mode. So it'll take over the, the control of that port. To exit from that port and go to another one, you just enter control D, which is shown here, and that's also configurable. So just to, to wrap up, uh, the way I would do this remotely, I would open up a Telnet session or an SSH session in this instance, connect to the RTAC, log in, enter POR space one, press enter, and then I'm automatically connected to the relay. The RTAC is continually pulling the relay, and I can still do the meter command or look at the settings. So that's pretty much it. Thanks, and um, for more information, you can check out the instruction manual or look at the other videos on the website. Thanks.